Good morning. We come to the last of our, our, our Everybody Welcome sermon series today. And our theme for today is that we welcome even our enemies. Um, Pat, the scripture is Matthew 5, 38 through 48. And our district superintendent is bringing this, or is preaching this Sunday. And she has chose to use the message as the translation that she wants to um, uh, preach from. Uh, many times, and this is one of those passages that uh, I think that the message helps us to understand a little bit better uh, what's going on there and, and how to uh, better uh, comprehend um, how Jesus is trying, the message that Jesus is trying to get across. So here is this, the passage from Matthew. This is from the Sermon on the Mount, by the way. Um, Jesus is teaching to the disciples. Uh, and so we start here with verse 38 in chapter 5. Here's another old saying that deserves a second look. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Is that what going to get us anywhere? Here's what I propose. Don't hit back at all. If someone strikes you, stand there and take it. If someone drags you into court and sues for the shirt off your back, gift wrap your, gift wrap your best coat and make a present of it. If someone takes an unfair advantage of you, use the occasion to practice the servant life. No more tit for tat stuff, live generously. You're familiar with the old written law, love your friend and its unwritten companion, hate your enemy. I'm challenging that. I'm telling you to love your enemies let them bring out the best in you, not the worst. When someone gives you a hard time, respond with the supple moves of prayer. For then you are working out your true selves, your God-created selves. This is what God does. He gives his best. The sun to warm and the rain to nourish to everyone, regardless of the good and bad, the nice and nasty. If you all... If you, all you do is love the lovable, do you expect a bonus? Anyone can do that. You, if you simply say hello to those who greet you, do you expect a medal? Any run-of-the-mill sinner can do that. In a word, what I'm saying is grow up. Your kingdom subjects. Now live like it. Live out your God-created identity. Live generously and graciously toward others the way God lives toward you. This uh, tit for tat, uh, eye for an eye, you might be interested to know that that is the foundation of the oldest uh, record of, of laws that have been recorded uh, going back over 2,000 years. And that it was intended to um, uh, add an element of mercy. It was not intended to be uh, um, vengeful. Uh, it, it intended to exact, extract just punishment for, for what you had done. Um, and it, like I said, it wasn't literal. Um, there were, it was intended to be a guide for the judges. And they would put a value on what was lost. If a person who was blind in one eye and that was the eye that was lost through some accident, uh, there's a value placed on it. And you would not extract the loss of a good eye uh, for that. And very soon the judges started to uh, impose a monetary value on what had been lost. Um, and so making a judgment as to how uh, good a shape the, the, that your eye or the tooth or uh, the arm, whatever it was, uh, and, and the value that you were losing as a result of that. Uh, the, um, 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 if someone, uh, as the message says, if someone's beating on you just to stand there and take it. That's not to be a punching bag. Um, this is one case where I think that the message kind of loses a little bit 
in that um, the intent in uh, what Jesus is saying here, that uh, if somebody's insulting you, a slap on the face is an insult. Uh, it's not uh, a physical punishment, uh, no, not punching on somebody. And, and Jesus is saying, you, you take that insult. You don't uh, retaliate uh, insult for insult. That, that you stand there and take it, and as such, uh, you're, you're the better person. Um, he talks, also talks about uh, if somebody takes you into court and wants your your shirt, the shirt off your back. I think is the image that he's trying to get there. That you're to take your your best coat, gift wrap it, and give them that also, uh, so that uh, you're you're you're. Uh, doing more there. Um, in, in the uh, older language, it uh, the tunic is, is the outer gar uh, garment and there's a cloak that's worn over it. And under the, the Jewish law, um, you could not take a man's cloak and, and keep it after sundown. Uh, if it was given for uh, um, equity, then you had to give it back to him by sundown. And Jesus is saying that you, you don't mind that. You go ahead and give it to him. Uh, and then we get to the crux of the matter. Um, and that is to love your enemies. Now, there are... In the uh, Greek language, there are several different words that uh, denote love. And each one denotes a different type of love. Uh, and so, so what, what's being, uh, uh, what Jesus is trying to teach here is that uh, how we relate to each other. Um, we can relate to people uh, in a very uh, warm way or a very cold way. And, and, and so Jesus is saying that those that you might consider your enemies, that you might be uh, wanting to give them the cold shoulder, turn your back on them. And Jesus is saying, no, uh, you're, you're to have a relationship with them. Um, and he offers the, the idea of prayer, uh, of praying for that relationship. Some years ago in my former life as a Xerox service rep, I had to service an account. Um, and the owner of this particular business was a very, very disagreeable individual. Um, he just brought out the worst in people. And one day, he just flat told me to get out. That he didn't want to hear any more excuses. He wanted somebody to fix the machine. Uh, I had to inform him that the machine, that the equipment that he had uh, was unique to this area in Western Virginia. And I was the only one trained on it. If he was going to tell me to get out and, and not come back, then that meant he had to wait for somebody to come from Richmond, uh, which mean, would mean a two or, th I mean, at least a day and maybe two day wait to get service. Uh, and, and that was just, that would be totally unacceptable to him. Uh, so I knew I was going to have to go back in there. And my co-workers, to, just to give you an idea how disagreeable this fellow was, uh, I was the primary service rep, and on the rest of the equipment <clears throat> that this specialized equipment was attached to, we were all trained on it. Uh, and when service calls came up, uh, my co-workers, if I was working on another account, they would come and relieve me uh, so that they would not have to go to that account. That uh, So I was the one that had to deal with them. After him telling me that I had to get out, and, and then he didn't want me in there. I went to our sales rep uh, and I asked Carl, I said, what are we going to do about him? 
and he shrugged his shoulders and said, I really don't know. Uh, but but then he kind of smiled and he said, well, yes, I do know. I have to understand that Carl is a Christian. Uh, he and I had been uh, participating in a, a Bible study for sort of some time then. And what Carl says said to me, which I should have known without Carl saying it, was the one thing we can do is we can pray for him and pray about that relationship. And so I started doing that on a daily basis. Now, I don't want to tell you, I can't tell you that he became uh, a cheerful, delightful person to be around because that didn't happen. But I can tell you that our relationship changed and it was no longer adversarial. Uh, we were able to communicate with one another. Um, and at one point, uh, as I was leaving Xerox, he made a rather generous donation to me uh, that, it, that assisted in my ministry and, and giving me the um, cutoff sheets of paper. He had a, a particular job that he was running on 11 by 17 sheet. And <clears throat> the way the pages worked out, there was a sheet that was cut off. Um, it was blank and he was cutting that off and he gave me several cases of paper that had already been run through the machine so it wasn't usable uh, for first-class printing uh, that I used in my ministry up until I retired uh, that's how much paper he gave me that I was able to use uh, for in my printer in my office uh, there so he said prayer pray for him uh, and then he goes on to say, to live into the image that you were created. In Genesis, it tells us that we were created in God's image. Uh, and, and Paul talks about being perfected uh, in our faith, uh, perfected to reflect that image of Christ. Um, we're to live our lives in such a way that it points people to God, our Creator. Uh, and in, in the message, he says uh, that we're to be kingdom people. Um, in other words, building God's kingdom here on earth. I don't know how uh, Reverend Bates is going to unpack this for us, but um, there's a lot here that we can chew on and, and uh, contemplate. And, and Jesus, you know, even the first part of it. Um, it all deals down to personal relationships, how we conduct ourselves as God's children, as sisters and brothers of Jesus Christ. Do we conduct ourselves in such a way that uh, point to them, or do we conduct ourselves in such a way that uh, point people away from them? So may God's blessings be upon you, and I look forward to you're joining us in worship this morning.